Game of Thrones has finally returned, and to celebrate this occasion we're going to be taking a look at one of the best things about the show. No, not the acting, the cinematography, or the story, the geology, obviously. In the last season we were given some new views of one of the important locations in Westeros, Dragonstone, the ancestral home of the Targaryens. The island of Dragonstone, located in the entrance to Blackwater Bay, displays some very interesting geological sequences, particularly on the beach where Daenerys and her army first land. This geology is further represented in the very throne Daenerys sits in, demonstrating how significant these incredible looking rocks must have been to the Targaryens. Now, these sequences of rocks can actually be found in real life, and it seems the shooting location was chosen due to how striking they appear, adding to the sense of a fantasy world. The real Dragonstone Beach is Itzrun Beach near Zumaya, a small town in the Basque country of northern Spain, and the area is well known by geologists all over the world for its unique rocks. One of the things I find the most remarkable about geology is how you can look at a rock or a section of strata, and you're able to tell a story of what happened millions of years ago to form this particular feature before you. The rocks at Itzrun Beach and Dragonstone are no different, as they're part of a sequence of sedimentary rock layers known as a flish. They've been dated from the Cretaceous through to more modern times, and apparently the KPG boundary can be located in the sequences on this beach, proving that an end Cretaceous mass extinction must have taken place in the Game of Thrones world too. But anyway, a flish is a pretty fascinating bit of geological product, as it's the result of sediment being deposited on a steep slope that forms very quickly deep beneath the sea. The slope develops when a period of mountain building occurs, and numerous cycles of deposition happen to create the distinctive rocks we can see today. Under the water, sediment coming from the mountains that are being formed nearby are laid down in beds that gradually get finer grained as they go up, and often there are shales interbedded with sandstones. At the base of some of these cycles though, there are the much coarser grained conglomerates and breccias, which indicates that powerful underwater flows of water and sediment transported these rocks down the slopes millions of years ago. The coarsest rocks would have been the first to settle when the flows, known as turbidity currents, settled down, and then the finer grained sediments settled afterwards, which explains why we see a gradually upward finding trend in the cycles at Dragonstone. So, we can tell from all this that Dragonstone formed as the result of mountain building occurring nearby, and sediments being deposited in the depths of an ancient ocean. But, as you probably know, there's more to the geology of Dragonstone. Hidden inside caves underneath the island are deposits of dragonglass, a material that can be used to kill white walkers, a huge advantage for the people of Westeros in their fight against the dead. But what is dragonglass? Well, it's actually obsidian, a type of volcanic glass, and this is where the geology of Dragonstone gets weird, since as we just established, the rocks that seem to make up most of the island were formed deep beneath the ocean. However, obsidian is formed when volcanoes on land erupt lava that is then cooled very rapidly by contacting water, and the types of volcanoes and lava that erupt beneath the sea, closer to where the flish would have formed, do not produce obsidian. This is because the mineral composition of the lava from undersea volcanoes is much richer in magnesium and iron, and relatively poorer in silica compared to the lava that forms obsidian, and so when these volcanoes erupt they form basalt, or scoria, and not dragonglass. That's why, in reality, there's no obsidian on its run beach. Though to be fair, this is a world where demon babies and zombie armies also exist, so a bit of fanciful geology is hardly anything to complain about but a geologist would not be advising John to look for dragonglass at Dragonstone. Anyway, there's a bit of fun geology to celebrate the return of this great show, but if you're looking for even more science being applied to the series, you should definitely go and watch Trey the Explainer's video on the anthropology of Game of Thrones. It's an absolutely fascinating discussion, and he goes into so much detail on all the different hominin species that inhabit the world and their relationships to one another, as well as how they all dispersed across Essos and Westeros. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.